Now I wanted to talk in this lecture on, about qualitative response regression models. Now that's the official name, but actually a better name for this would be probability regression models, because in contrast to the previous lectures, now in this case, the Y variable that you're interested in is best interpreted as a probability. Okay, and it's all about how the probability of a certain event happening depends on a certain set of X variables. And because these are probabilities rather than measurements in some sense, this makes a big difference. So if you think back to high school maths, most sensible probabilities have to lie between zero and one. Okay, now this is an absolutely straightforward observation, but it's really important uh, for these class of models that we talk about in this lecture, precisely because we need to enforce this constraint that sensible probabilities lie between zero and one. And precisely because of this, although the official name of these things is qualitative response regression models, really a better name for this would be probability regression models, precisely because we're trying to explain how the probability of a certain event happening depends on a load of X variables. It's still basically a regression problem, but now the thing we're interested in is a probability rather than a measurement. So in terms of outline of today's lecture then, so I'll try and give a background, an overview. So as I've done in other lectures, there are some pictures which will sort of illustrate what's really going on here. Once you can illustrate everything with pictures, it doesn't matter that there are equations, it should simplify everything for you. The basic problem that we are covering in this lecture is regressing probabilities. And as we said before, from high school maths, sensible probabilities have to lie between zero and one. And then we'll talk about three different probability regression models, one that you shouldn't use and two that you should. So We'll talk first of all about a linear probability model. Please don't use this. So for whatever reason, this is quite a popular model that is talked about in the standard econometrics book, but please don't use this. The more sensible models to use would be either the logit and the probit model. So please, in contrast, use this. And then I'll give a worked example at the end. Now, I just wanted to sort of say here that there is a slight subtlety here in that look for similar models to give you similar numerical answers in practical examples. Okay, so in the work numerical example, the thing to watch for here is that a logit and probit model should be giving you similar answers because they are similar models. So I want to give a summary, it says there, of the last lecture, but really it's of the course so far. So in the past we've discussed dummy variable regression models and we'll give more examples of these next week. So the idea in this case with these dummy variable regression models is that the Y variable remains a continuous measurement, but you might have qualitative or categorical X variables. I'll give another example of this in next week's lecture. But in this lecture, we discuss regression models where the Y variable itself is categorical. Now this looks a bit weird, but it's often best interpreted that the Y variable you're interested in is actually a probability in being in one of two categories. So certain examples might include yes or no, present or absent. And then a couple of examples from practical project work I've been involved with. So an Islamic bank or non-Islamic bank, high score, not a high score. Okay, so usually what you've got is two categories and you want to calculate the probability of being in either category dependent on either X variable. Now there's all sorts of examples my concern here is that the textbook examples tend to give slightly enough examples, things like yes, no, present, absence. Uh, more realistic examples that I've come across in practical research work have been Islamic bank, non-Islamic bank, high score, not a high score. Now these probability models are then more complex than what we've seen before. So in terms of a typical overview then, so classical regression models are great, but run into problems very quickly. The classic example of this, I think, for accounting and finance would be that simple surveys can generate surprisingly complex data, which then in itself necessitate quite a complex statistical model. OK, so this more complex data from things like surveys and count data necessitates more complicated statistical models, 
more complex regression models, so harder regression models, and the technical term for this is just generalized linear models. Now, if you think of regression as just being a linear model, as described by the R commands, a harder regression is just a generalized linear model, and in turn, slightly different R commands, GLM for generalized linear model. Now, what I wanted to sort of say at the bottom of the slide is that one of my best friends had a maths degree like me and found generalized linear models difficult. So I think it's worthy, worthwhile to sort of treat the subject with respect. It's not necessarily difficult, but they are designed to make sense. Okay, so I've studied generalized linear models for years now. However, it's possible to do an entire statistics degree without covering this, and these are a subject that somebody who is intelligent may not necessarily get to grips with this without hard work. So I wanted here to try and give a bit of a flavour of where the subject goes. I have written a textbook chapter on generalised linear models, and this is one of the things that used to really excite me, is that the textbook that we'd written that included this material was available on the Amazon website, and my name is on this Amazon website. In terms of applied statistical work, I've also used generalized linear models to model complicated survey data. So this was a proper problem, and I felt under some pressure to sort of make good on my eight years of university education in mathematics. I've done some modeling of uh, customer satisfaction data, uh, which was in a practical industrial problem, talk about that in the next lecture. I was using generalized linear models to analyze that data. I've also used generalized linear models to model the effect of academic journal rankings on the perceived quality of published research. Okay, so these were all serious practical problems. It's not necessarily automatic that you can get sensible statistical results from analyzing these. And I ought to say here as well that past students of mine have also successfully used generalized linear models and these probability regression models. Okay, so the subject can go somewhere interesting, even if you don't necessarily find quantitative research methods your cup of tea. The basic problem that we are covering here is this problem of regressing or estimating probabilities. And these things are technically called qualitative response regression models but probably a better name would be probability regression models. The background reference, no, not really very good. In this instance is chapter 15 of Gujarati and Porter. Uh, my own lecture notes and textbook, I think, are better. And as I said before, you've got into, by way of resources, these lecture recordings, the PDF lecture slides and the PDF study book. Now, I'm intending to write a textbook myself from this material, so you should have quite a lot of complete teaching resources available to you that are better than this textbook. I do appreciate uh, that this is far from ideal teaching conditions at the moment, but you should have quite a lot of high quality resources available to you. And as I always say, I've tried as much as possible to have my lecture materials self-contained. The basic problem then in terms of regressing or estimated probabilities is to calculate how the probability of being in certain categories, usually one of two categories, depends on the X variables involved in your question. Okay, and then because these are regression problems with probabilities, it is more complex compared to the things you've seen before. The qualitative dependent variable models then, these are uh, regression models where the Y variable can be categorized into two categories like yes, no, present, absent, etc. So these are sort of the standard examples you see in textbooks. You might see more interesting examples like high score, not a high score, Islamic bank, not an Islamic bank, etc. So these things in applications can have a sort of definition and identity in their own right. Uh, similar terminology used can be confusing. In my experience, the term successes and failures are often used in R and our coding, so I think these are probably the best terms to use. In economics and finance, these are conventionally given the names dichotomous or dummy variable regression models. I think these terms are a bit confusing. A better 
term would be probability regression models because that's a better description I think of what's actually going on here and as an illustrative example of this so suppose you've got an operations research problem and you want to ask how does the probability that an airplane component fails depend on the applied load okay so it's kind of obvious that the higher the load that it, the component is exposed to the higher the probability of failure okay but it's not necessarily automatic in terms of what this precise numerical relationship will be this is the uh, data set for this illustrative example then so the idea is you take an airplane component subject it to a load in kilograms and then you count the number of failures out of the number of components that you've tested okay and so what we've got in this data set is that the first column is the load the second column is the number of components tested and then the third column is the number of components that failed so these look a little bit weird when you first see it presented like this but you need to categorize the data in terms of the number of successes and the number of failures so the number of successes although it doesn't necessarily tell you this straight away in this table the number of successes is just going to be the number of components tested minus the number of failures okay so it may not look like it but this information in the table is it is all you need but you just need it expressed in slightly different format in terms of the number of successes and the number of failures and if you look at the next slide you will see that the data has to be uh, organized in terms of the number of successes and the number of failures it's a slightly strange way of doing this and it can look a little bit harder than it really is when you first see this sort of problem I'll go to reading the data as we've seen before so you have the data in the brackets you need the C for concatenate come to the bracket to make sure that everything is just joined together and the individual data points are separated with a comma and a space some typos in places on these lecture slides but I will make sure that the uh, R code and the .txt files work perfectly and what you need to do here is calculate the proportion of which should be calculated like that and then you need an extra code in profit models and you need to define just the number of successes which is just the number of components tested number of failures and then you need to join the number of successes and failures together so when you do this you have a column of successes and failures listed side by side and the command in order to do this in R is C bind and what C bind does it is it binds these two columns of successes and failures together and if you're in R and you run these commands if you just then show you how this data set has been constructed and these columns bound together so the first model I wanted to go through is this linear probability model now it's not really a serious model but it is attractive in terms of the simplicity of the model so the basic idea is you just fit a regression model to the probability of success and what you have is that in this equation the classical regression assumption is that the ui is a normally distributed error term so this isn't a great probability model but it is popular and discussed in this popular textbook by Gujarati and Porter the model is known as a linear probability model for two reasons essentially you've got a linear regression model so a linear bit and it's a probability model so a probability bit okay so it's understood that the left hand side of the equation refers, refers to a probability that's the probability bit and then the model is just a linear regression model which gives you the linear bit okay now it's not a very sensible model but the deficiencies of this model show you how to come up with more professional probability regression models that are genuinely useful both in terms of theory and applications certainly useful for 
financial applications, things like survey data and count data.